video, we're going to show how the Boardwalk Digital Ledger can be used for a master data management application. What you're looking at here is information being moved across multiple groups for maturing this master data before it's moved into SAP, but first it originates within a PDM data environment. And there's basically different groups of individuals that are working with the data. First of all, there's what's called the basic data, and this is the information that's coming in from the transactional system where in the role as the manager, you're looking at kind of the basic information to make sure that it's correct, to see who is assigned ownership to be working on it. Um, and then as you move come from left to right, you kind of have a workflow where you can say, well, I'd like to have this organization for sales, for example, to be able to make updates to the data. And then I'd like to be able to have this organization for what, what's being called MRP to make an update to the data. And then likewise, some accounting information. And then setting this inside the digital ledger, you're able to have all these different groups work with this information at the same time, and then also do things like, you know, add attachments to it, or have some logic in that says, once the workflow is completed, such that each one of the different groups has completed their area, and they can only update these columns and not other columns that they're supposed to within their functional role, then have the integration look at this row and say, okay, it's ready to be pushed to SAP. So what we're able to do is to say, well, let's, let's have people interact with this data. So when they do it, the first thing they do is they click on refresh. And what refresh does is it goes and it checks the ledger to see if any changes have been done that are not reflected in the worksheets that people have on their desktops. And if there's been a change, you'll see new rows come in. So you can see here, this is a new row that's been added through integration. And it's showing that this is for demo material for customer number nine. And if I take a look at this, I say, well, you know, this one looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and, and I'll say that I want to be able to, this basic data looks correct. Um, but, you know, maybe equally I want to be able to take, you know, this one right here that, that's already had some work done it for this one and say, um, okay, let's, let's see which one. I'll take this guy right here and say, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this. So I can say copy this one. Now you can see that this one has copied this row and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch this to be 10 because we don't have a 10 yet and I'll get rid of this. But you'll also notice from a control perspective when it did that copy, it didn't copy any of this other data. So with the digital edge you're able to go in and you say, hey, whenever you have these operations where you want to be able to insert multiple rows or, or make copies of rows, you can control what data is being copied. And in this case, I wanted all the data that I had in terms of the master information for my row, row to show up. But the information that everybody else was going to change, I didn't want to have that show up. So I'll go ahead and say this one's released as well. Um, and now that I've done these changes, I'm going to go ahead and hit submit. Um, and I'll say uh, data updates. And now this, is, this data is now available for the users to interact with it. And how, how does that user interaction happen? Well, let, let's take a look at this access control. So within the digital ledger, you're able to go in and say, I want to use any column associated with the data and say, for example, I have these different users, but I only want the data to see the data or for them to interact with the data they're supposed to. So when I set this up, it says, hey, I want user one only to see rows where user one shows up in the owner column. And user two, likewise, only to see, see rows associated with user two. So effectively, you're able to take all of this information that's being shared between multiple parties. Instead of having to have it necessarily on separate tabs, you can have a single digital ledger and have multiple people collaborate with this information and see how it changes over time. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this one. And now I'm going to go take a look at what user one sees. And now user one, um, as you can see, there's a little bit of a different workflow. So they're, they're not able to change any of the master data. They can make some change comments if they want, some commentary back and forth. And then they're able to interact with this data, but not the data over here in the second section, right? So now, since I, this is a, a workbook that I've already downloaded, I can say refresh this. And there can be email notifications to say that new rows have been added from PDM or the PDM can run... Uh, every morning and have that refresh happen. But what's happened here is you can see those new rows that were added, one through integration and one by the manager, have shown up now inside this person's uh, data set. So I can say I'd like to um, 
I'm going to switch this to speed more updates because I'm going to show you a cell history in a second. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and you know, copy and paste some data here, place that here and paste that here. And then you'll also notice that over here it's telling you when people have made changes, right? So you're in line, you're able to see exactly who did the last change. And now that I've made these updates, um, and I can say, uh, you know, for example, this is new, I'll, I'll say submit. And uh, these are going to be my changes. And as I do these changes, I'll submit them. Now, one thing you can do is you can click on any cell at any time and see the history of it. So you remember what this used to say before. Well, if I click on this and say, show me the changes to this, this particular value, you can see here that this started saying this is good now, but now it says more updates, now it says more changes. So the history of the data gives you the ability to, to go back at a ledger level at any individual cell and see how it's changed over time. Um, on a continuous basis, you're able to see how the updates have been completed. And then now if I say, well, what's this look like when somebody is starting from scratch? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close this out. And I'm going to say, let's, let's go ahead and see what this looks like for somebody starting out from scratch. And I'll go to the user template here. Now this one has no data in it. And this is generally how the process starts for a user is they have a blank template. It has all the required information in order to communicate with the ledger. But then you log in. And if I say I'm going to log in as user 1A, right? So now this is that user that's only going to see the data for user 1, but their functional role is different. And that means that when they're interacting with the data, they're only going to be able to make changes to certain sets of information that the other user can't change. So remember the sales data here is what that other user just updated, but now this person's responsible for this area. So then they can come in and, and again they can do you know, copy and paste, and they can place information here and say, my changes. And now this person is effectively involved in a workflow to go back and forth. And, and since I downloaded this from scratch, you can see that the new rows that were added by PDM and also by the manager are already there. So now I can say, well, let's go ahead and submit this changes. Um, and I'm going to say, these are my updates. And now when I go ahead and I submit this, it's going to capture this. Um, and now, you know, you'd also like to be able to, to give people the ability to work not just inside of Excel, but also um, inside of a browser. But first, let's take a look at, you know, one more user inside of Excel, because so far I've only looked at user one. If I go back and I say, well, let's, let's check on user two, right? And now if user two comes in here and refreshes, there's been a lot of activity for user one, but because of access control, Right? So you remember there's nothing that in, is, this in, is in this user's view that's associated with user 1, so therefore they can't see it. So changes from me, I'm going to type in here, um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll just um, copy a value here. Um, and of course I'm just kind of showing how these data change. Um, there can be pick lists, so like here I can say this one's been ready you know, to be shared. Any pick lists or anything else you want to do, you can do that. Um, and now this is user 2 who's interacting using the same shared digital ledger, but because of access control, they're only seeing their data. Um, and this shows another role of a person running inside of um, Excel. Um, and then I can also go in and say, well, you know, let's, let's go in and say, hey, what if I want to be able to interact with this, you know, in another data environment? So I can say instead of Excel, I'd like to be able to make some changes in a browser. So here, this is the digital ledger being shared in a browser. Um, and if I can say, now I can come in and I can say um, my changes, for example, and say now submit this. So this is showing how the digital ledger can be accessed by multiple different roles. Um, so I've done it inside the browser. I've done it inside the two different forms of Excel. So now if I come back to the manager, and the manager says, hey, you know, let's refresh this and see you know, all the changes that have been done. Now I can go in and I can say, well, um, let's see all the updates from these different users. So as you can see, there's been a whole bunch of changes here, right? But everything is refreshing, and as it's refreshing, you're seeing what the different changes are. 
you, know, you can go into any cell and you can say, show me how this data has changed over time. So if I go ahead and I click on this thing and I say, show me updates to this, you know, there's only been this one data value. But equally, I can go back and I can say for an individual row, so like this guy right here, I'll say, show me how this has changed over time. And now I can say, take all of these and say, give me a report for the history of this particular SKU as it's run through time. And you can see I've done a lot of changes here, but this is basically generating on demand the changes. And as you see, it shows you what the old value was, what the new value was, who did the changes. And I scroll over here. Um, you can see all the different changes that were done and who the different people are that did it. Or I can go back and I can say, well, show me all the changes to the ledger because I want to make sure that all the users that are interacting with the ledger have made their updates and then I can see them. And here, this is showing you the changes of these over time. And you can go back at any time and say, well, okay, I want to see what did this person do. So this is now going back to the update by uh, this MF user one. And I can say, hey, recreate the ledger as of that time. So here, you can see the old value, you can see the new value. So using the Boardwalk Digital Ledger, you have a complete capability for managing data and cell level changes over time. Uh, you also have the ability to do attachments. So remember I mentioned the attachments over here, and you can see that this is telling me that I have an attachment for this particular row. So if I come in and I say, well, show me what that attachment is, I can say, hmm, okay, well, let, let's take a look at what this was. So if I say download this and open this up, then this is going to show me a picture of a console that was created and submitted for part of this. And I can say, okay, well, you know, for this new one, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to submit an attachment to this. I'm going to say upload this and I'll say um, documentation. And I'll say select this file and we'll go back to where we're, you know, we're doing this demo. Um, and here's a spec sheet. Um, this is the spec and now this gets uploaded, uploaded to the digital ledger as well. And then now, if I take a look at it, you can see that this is being shared uh, between all the users that are part of the collaboration. And I, again, I can come back on this thing and say, well, show me how this has changed over time. And then finally, all this data is being run um, through Excel. So you have all the capabilities to say, you know, show me all the, the latest changes that have been done by different users. You can also have this information pushed out to an external reporting system. And then finally, assuming all this integration is matured to the point where you're really comfortable to release it, then once everything has reached the status where it says each one of the different sections has been set to Y complete, then integration can go in and can find just these rows that have been changed and push that back through the integration SAP, which then closes the loop of managing master data using the Boardwalk Digital Ledger.